What if I told you this player has 80% win rate on Weaver with 16 games despite the hero only having 54% right now? Let's jump right into what he does to perform so well. A big part of the games he wins are Giga Stomps, games that end in 20 minutes, which is awesome, right? If you want to climb MMR, short games are the dream for that. And this hero can break lanes in a way almost no other hero can. And I'm gonna give you a very quick recipe for how to do it. Quickly use your Sukuchi from the base to penetrate enemy lines and drop a ward either in this cliff if you're radiant or in this area if you're dire. If you get spotted before you drop the ward, change to a lane ward that gives similar vision without being too close in proximity to that cliff so it doesn't get dewarded. When in lane, there are two timings you have to be wary about. The first career delivery, which is at around one minute-ish, so always play around the camps close to the safe lane creeps so you are in close proximity to incoming carriers. Once you kill the first carrier, you will have around 1 minute 30 to 2 minutes until it is back delivering items. So if you kill the first one at around this time, it gives you time to lane, it gives you time to get the Lotus and still be ready for the second volley of carriers. If you manage to kill them at 3 minutes, it means you will have until close to minute 5 to snipe them again, which in this case gives the Weaver a chance to gank opposite side lane and still be back through Twin Gates for killing it the third time pretty much renting Weaver a condo on Morphling's head for the rest of the month. <laughs> now, you might be asking yourself, besides the whole kill courier cheese thing, why is this hero any good? He didn't really get any significant buffs. First of all, the swarm now deals 30 damage per bug bite in comparison to 24. This is a 30% damage buff. This is a gigantic improvement to the mid game of Weaver. But more important than that, this hero is a great vessel builder, which is amazing to have in the blade mail hard meta. Not only Weaver likes building the item, but because you don't need to get boots on the hero, your timings, even in bad games, are gonna be faster than average. Weaver does an insane amount of damage. In pretty much every mid-game fight, Weaver dealt the highest damage for the team. We talked about the Swarm being buffed, but because of Weaver's shard, there's also games maxing E as a support is viable and a really good way to scale into physical damage if your team needs it or if the game allows it. Another thing to point out is that even though Weaver's kit is very good against blade mail hard heroes, it can also enable them further because the Ags enhances exactly what they already want to be doing with their heroes anyways. With that said though, it's important to point out that this is not a build he goes for very often. In longer games, he tries to scale as a right clicker way more than trying to play as a safe type support. How do you choose between going for right click build or defensive weaver then? The first piece of the puzzle is determined by whether you need to go vessel or not. So ask yourself, do you need vessel in this game? Heroes like Bristle, Necro, Spectre, Alchemist are all examples of heroes vessel is great against. Do you have a hero in your team that is going urn or vessel and needs the item more than you do? Invoker is the classic hero that wants it, so you are free from vessel duty now. If you're not going Vassal, then Solar Crest is 100% the item you're going to get. Not only it has an amazing build-up, but it pushes you towards the right-click direction you want in the first place. We are going to talk more about item build at the end of the video, where I showcase item and skill build. For now, let's talk about the map movements of Weaver, since you kinda get the idea of the items you have to buy. First of all, this is not a support that wants to initiate fights and open up for the team. Even if you're having a good game, this hero can die very easily. You want to position yourself close to your team, but in a way, you're not the first point of contact. You need the vision of the supports to crawl around the fight and find your target, quickly get in, quickly get out. One move Theolicor likes doing a lot when the lanes were pushed or the game was low was camping the enemy triangle. Usually centers this cliff and sits in this area farming the camps. Not only this is hard farm you're denying from the enemy team, but this position is very likely to have couriers around, which are incredibly valuable at this stage of the game. Even if the enemy tries to go at you, you can always hide here, you're quite hard to catch, and killing you actually doesn't give the enemy anything in the map. This is also a place where you can connect to your teammates quite easily. This is always a good place to be if you're not really sure what your role in the map is at the moment. Since we are talking about this area of the map, deep wards are a big aspect of playing Weaver support. This hero can go into places most supports cannot, and just like a nature's prophet, ward places that the opponent will never expect. Going from the triangle into base wards for even more courier snipes or just getting wards to find a course farming are two options that you have. 
make sure to always keep a couple with you and get vision as you explore the map. Speaking of exploring, you can explore the description to find a link for my Patreon where I'm gonna be giving away one of these keyboards or a list if you just wanna buy it. This is not an ad, this is a warning. I left this towards the later part of the video because people are not ready to accept the fact that Midas is freaking strong. You're obviously not rushing this, but once you have either solar or vessel, there's no item in the game that feels amazing and you're gonna get in a short period of time. Also, with your support farms very slowly. You don't have the mana sustain to spam Shukuchi and you also don't want to be showing lanes frequently in the first place because as we already discussed, this hero plays in the shadows. Midas lets you scale regardless, by the way, of going right-click build or not. At the end of the day, let's face it, Midas doesn't really synergize that much with right-click Weaver. Still though, Fioli Core went for Midas in 65% of the games and most of the ones he didn't get Midas were either stomps that ended too quickly. Unless you really need a different item, it's hard to go wrong with Midas on Weaver. We live in a patch where games end up very, very slowly. So even if you're stomping or if you're losing really hard, it's kind of hard to go wrong with Midas. Maxing your passive usually means that you're either stomping or that you can solo kill heroes. As far as single target damage goes, you will deal more damage going for this path. By the way, there are games Theolicor gets Vassal and goes this route anyways. So maxing E isn't necessarily related to having Solar Crest or not. It's just a question on whether you want to play the fights from afar and throw in your Q or dive heroes and actually right click them. I don't think this is the most common scenario, but Theolicor does go for this build fairly often. Going this path means that you always want to get shard after your first item or your Midas just because it synergizes greatly with maxing Geminate attack in the first place. Even though this build can feel risky, it is a great way to snowball games that you stomp the lane really hard. Don't be afraid to be greedy when you know you have the upper hand. You will max the swarm in games you cannot get too close, which are in my opinion most games. This is a reliable spell that does a lot of damage and also synergizes with your talents way more. It gives you Roche Taken, it gives you Visioning Fights, and is also a way riskier way to pull off Support Weaver. Alright, so let's get to the item build. Your normal starting item build is this one. Two branches that set up for Wand, this is non-negotiable. Now, are you gonna go Urn or Medallion this game? If you're gonna go Medallion, get a stick. But if you're going to get an Urn, get a circle. Get yourself two sets of Tangos, a Blood Grenade, Wards and Sentry. You will follow up into either Solar Crest or Vassal. Obviously, if you're going Vassal, don't forget to buy a stick later on. Later, you're gonna get a Midas. From here, get the Shard if you maxed E or get whatever item you think you need for the game for the other build. And then for the two paths, you can choose between Orchid, Lotus Orb, Lincoln's, Maelstrom, Atos, they can all be good depending on the game, so don't be afraid to experiment with this hero. We pretty much talked about the skill build already, but be aware of this level 3 thing. Theolicor doesn't get Tsukushi level 2 at level 3, and instead he goes for 1 1 1 in every game. It makes the hero way stronger earlier. In the past, people would skip Geminate attack, but it got buffed to a level where you always wanted a level 2 for trading and sniping carriers, as we already discussed. From there, Max Tsukuchi. Geminin then Swarm, or the other way around. If you're dying too much, get the Strength Talent at level 10, but if not, you can max your other spells before the level 10 talent. You can even get the level 15 talent before it. But yeah, talking about talents, always get Strength into Swarm at level 15 and 20. If the game feels like it's gonna go ultra late, you can always try to get the Geminate into damage at 25, but honestly, I think it's a debate. Still though, these are not rules, just a couple of pointers for you to fill this hero out and find out what works for you. Guys, this is it. Hope you enjoyed it.